Financial Times is taking a swipe at Bola Tinibu. According to them, President Tinibu's economic policies are disjointed and is pushing tens of millions into misery and will not end Nigerians' hardship. The newspaper is quoted as saying, Under Tinibu watch, hunger levels are soaring and millions of children are foregoing meals and school. Adding that the president's economic policies, fuel subsidy remover, and floating of the Naira have pushed tens of millions of already impoverished people deeper into misery. In the nearly 15 months since Bola Metinibu became president, he has forced his 220 million fellow Nigerians to swallow some bitter medicine. He removed generous fuel subsidy, one of the few benefits citizens receive from their inefficient and corrupt state. He allows the country's currency, the Naira, to enter free fall, fueling imported inflation and triggering the worst cost of living crisis in a generation. These measures have pushed tens of millions of already impoverished people deeper into misery. Now, you must understand that Financial Times is echoing the same sentiment of the New York Times, which reported Nigeria's economic policies under Bola Etinibu. According to the New York Times, he said that Nigeria is enduring its worst economic crisis in decades under President Bola Metinibu's leadership and is characterized by spiking inflation, a declining national currency, and widespread food insecurity. The Financial Times equally raised significant concerns about President Bola Tinibu's unexplained source of wealth, accusing his administration of looting billions through oil theft, while millions of Nigerians suffer from hunger and poverty. The Financial Times went ahead as saying, Corruption must be confronted. It does not help that Tinibu's own substantial wealth remains obscure, nor that his Minister for Poverty Alleviation was suspended over allegations of funds diversion, which she denies. It also does not assist that the state is implicated in large scale theft of oil, depriving the nation's coffers of billions of dollars. Tinibu must utilize all his political acumen to stem this theft. Financial Times is a reputable foreign media outlet. It's not a Nigerian media outlet and it's you know domiciled in England, but they are able to capture the state of the nation perfectly well. Everything they have stated so far is what Nigerians are currently facing. But then you will see the presidency they will come out to debunk whatever they are saying, trying to gaslight Nigerians and trying to gaslight these foreign media outlets from telling the truth. But no matter how you try to hide the truth, the truth will always surface. And whatever they are saying is the truth. If you want to get the true reflection of a government, go and ask the people. Because they, they are the ones that are the receiving end of any government policies. The people will tell you the truth about any particular government. You don't ask the government media aid. This media aid, they are feeding fat from the government. They will always defend their government, even if the government is, in, is ineffective. They will always say things that will put the government in a good light. The presidency, they've defended whatever bad policies they've dished out. According to them, they inherited a bad economy. Who did you inherit a bad economy from? You inherited a bad economy from President Muhammad Ubari, an APC man. Your party, APC, destroyed the economy. And that was the same economy they handed over to you. Now let us look at what the Financial Times is saying. They are talking about the first subsidy that was removed. Nigeria is a crude oil economy. Crude oil is our only source of income. Any attempt to increase the price of petroleum in this country will add untold hardship on the people. As you have seen, ever since petrol subsidy was removed, the price of everything in the market has skyrocketed times four. Bolami Etinibu did not end there. Bolami Etinibu increased the interest rate to 38%. The interest rate was at 18% when he took over from President Muhammad Dubari, but he increased it to 38%. What does it mean? It means that if you go to borrow money in the bank, you pay more interest rate now. This means that business company owners that go to the bank to borrow money from the bank now pay times two of the interest they used to pay one year ago. And if they pay this money to the bank as interest rate, they will put it on the price of the final goods. That is the reason why you see the price of the goods item in the markets have increased to over times five. The reason is because of the increased interest rate that Bola Metinibu has increased. And now you saw the devaluing of the Naira, which have saw a free fall of the Naira against the dollar. All these things contributed to the inflation we are currently facing. And again, Nigerians are hungry. 
the price of food items, basic food items in the market has skyrocketed. We are currently experiencing food shortage. The reason is due to insecurity. Farmers can no longer go to the farm. Bandit terrorists have taken over farmlands. Fulani herdsmen, they are destroying people's farm and taking over their homes. Farmers are being killed in their numbers. In the North Central, over 4,000 farmers have been killed so far. The government is paying lip service to insecurity and that is the reason why we can no longer feed ourselves. A country of 220 million persons can no longer feed herself. They want to even manage to go to farms. There are no incentives for them. Government is not even giving them any grants or incentive to help them produce more food. Rather, the government is subsidizing Hajj, a religious pilgrimage for 90 billion naira. The government is engaging in building of coastal highway that is gopping 15 trillion naira. Tinibu is buying a 150 million presidential jet, that is 240 billion naira presidential jet. Each member of the National Assembly is going home with a 160 million SUV. In couple with this, Bolamia Tinibu is running the biggest government in the history of this country. The cabinet of Bolamia Tinibu is times two to what President Muhammad Bari had. In a time where President Bolamia Tinibu is telling you that he inherited a battered economy, but he's running the most expensive government in our history. If all this money that I've been mentioned so far, if all this lavish spending that have been mentioned so far was used to push to the farmers, there is absolutely no how we will be crying for food in our country today. If this money was directed towards stopping insecurity, there is no how the farmers will not go to farm. Another issue that was raised by the Financial Times is oil theft. You need to understand that our economy is dwindling because, like I mentioned earlier, our only source of revenue is crude oil. But this crude oil is being stolen. And the people that are responsible for stealing this crude oil are not common Nigerians. They are not ordinary Nigerians. These are people in government. Just like Mr. Peter B said, crude oil is not tom tom that you put in your pocket. For you to steal crude oil, a ship must berth on the sea and for that ship to berth on the sea, the navy, the air force must approve that ship to berth on the sea. Therefore, it is impossible to carry out oil theft in this country without collaborating with those in government. So what Financial Times is saying is that for the fact that we are having oil theft in our country, it is because Bola Tinibu is not fighting to stop it. A government that is willing and ready to stop oil theft will go all out to stop it. The reason why they are not stopping it is because they are those responsible for stealing it. How will you stop what you are responsible for stealing? This is the reason why you see these callous, soulless politicians. They want to kill their way. They want to buy their way to have this political power. They are not having this political power to better the lot of Nigerians. They are not having this political power to fix this country, to develop this country. They want this political power so that they will continue looting this country dry. They will continue having on in their access to the resources of this country to better their own life and the life of their generations on board. Look at Yaya Belu paying the school fees of his children up front. Another thing they mention is the source of wealth of Bola Metinibu. They are saying that his source of wealth is obscure. There is absolutely no way Bola Metinibu will become rich by just earning money from government. It's not possible. This man is stupendously rich by just being in politics. What is the business of Bola Metinibu aside in politics? What empire has he built? Look at someone like Mr. Pitobi. Pitobi has built successive business. You can see that P2B's wealth came from business. P2B was already rich before he ventured into politics. Was Bola Metinibu rich before he ventured into politics? Absolutely no. He became rich as a politician. And this is not only limited to Bola Metinibu. It cut across the politicians in this country. You will see someone that is struggling to feed. Someone that is living in one bedroom apartment. The moment the person gets into politics, by the time he's leaving office after four, eight years or whatever time he's leaving, this man will acquire billions of properties across the country and even overseas. You will see them sending their kids and wife abroad to go and study. You will see them having billions of naira stashed in faraway foreign bank accounts. This is the story of Nigerian politicians becoming stupendously rich at the expense of the people. They are rich so that the people can become poor and no one is questioning them. The financial agencies that were set up to tackle this level of corruption, rather than going after these politicians that are looting the state treasury dry, rather than going after these thief that are making themselves wealthy at the expense of the people, they are busy 
pursuing innocent boys that are carrying laptop around. But Brisky is currently in jail for spraying Naira. But Yaya Bello is working as a free man after looting the state treasury dry. With all of this, they are setting precedent. Successive politicians that are coming after them will also toy the same line of looting. That is the same reason you see someone like Beta Edu, a minister that was appointed by Bola Etinibu, just barely four months in office. This lady is looting billions of naira of the money that was meant to alleviate poverty in the country. What a shame. What a pathetic scenario we found ourselves in this country. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.